here soon. Uh, please go ahead with questions and reminder to uh, unmute yourself and to remute yourself when you're finished asking. Thank you. Hey, Amir, it's Josh from Charleston. I know you and uh, Dabo Sweeney have actually texted a lot over the last few years. Um, how did that relationship start and how much has he been motivating? How much has he motivated you? Uh, honestly speaking, I kind of started back on my uh, visit, you know, just talking to him. And uh, similar, like I tweeted about President Clemens, you know, since I stepped foot on campus, that was been in my corner and just, you know, wanted to see me succeed and take our program to the next level. And um, he's done nothing but support me. And uh, even if we lose, he's kind of one of the first people to text me and kind of, you know, jump on me and uh, kind of give me pointers and just keep talking to me through my ear and you know how to lead a team and stuff like that. So our relationship has definitely been mutual and uh, just seeing the success he has had has definitely been an inspiration to me and motivation for us to get our program to the next level similar, similar to what he did. Did he text you after the ACC tournament? Um, if I'm correct, I think he did. I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure he did. Any, any well wishes for the NCAA tournament from him? Oh, of course. Um, he, he, he wants nothing but to see us to see and take our program to the next level. So he definitely reached out and said so. Amir Joe Gorcho from WIS TV in Columbia. No matter what happens the rest of the way here, what do you hope your legacy and impact on Clemson will be once your time is done? Um, honestly speaking, I just hope that any kid in my position, you know, coming into college or with my same, uh, you know, nervous kind of take on college would just see that. You know, it definitely can hit you fast and um, you learn a lot and it definitely comes at you with some speed and it's all about the people you have around you. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to have Dante and Eli and Sheldon and them guys kind of teach me the ropes of the ACC. And uh, just from a leadership perspective, you know, I just hope that people see, you know, what I did in my time here and what I wanted to accomplish and what I did accomplish and what I want, you know, this program to be, you know, in the future, in the near future at that. So. I just hope that, you know, I left a really good impression and, you know, people just saw someone that, you know, gave it their all every time they were on the court. And most importantly, just thought you to have fun while playing. Amir, hey, kind, Amir, kind of along those same lines. Sorry, go, go ahead, ahead Will. Will. No, You're good, Will, go ahead. All right, Amir, uh, this is Will with the Clemson Insider. Just wanted to ask you, what, what was the last 20, that 28 hours like for you guys as players uh, stuck up in your room? And, you know, Coach, that was a little bit different than what you've had to do at Clemson. So what was it like for you guys? Um, it was more of a, a mental thing, you know, just being in your room, you know, if you're, even if you're back home with being by yourself, you at least, you know, go out a little bit, maybe go on a walk or something. But, you know, when we first got here, we had to completely stay in our rooms besides going to grab our food or having our food delivered to us. We were strictly in our rooms and you just had to find time or find ways to excite yourself and have fun. And, you know, you couldn't really see your teammates or anyone else. You just had to find ways to kind of you know, get the time to pass quickly. And um, it wasn't too bad. You know, I talked about being a, a homebody myself. So, you know, me being confined to the walls of a hotel room wasn't too bad. So it was pretty fun for me, but um, it was just kind of, just finding ways to pass time for the next 28 hours until you were able to, you know, test negative twice and be able to mingle with your teammates and coaching staff. Amir, what's it mean for you personally just to get to end your career with the NCAA tournament and having this year that you've had and, and just looking back into your career, so I'm starting um, with the NCAA tournament berth and now ending it here with one? Oh, it's definitely huge. You know, me and Clyde were on that team, and out of everyone on this team now, we're the only two with postseason experience of this nature and this magnitude. So it's, it's definitely important for us, and it's huge. It's something that we won't forget, you know, being able to go two out of three years, excluding last year's postseason that didn't happen. So it's definitely huge. And I hope that the younger guys on this team will be able to enjoy this experience the same way me and him did. So going into next season, you know, however far this, this postseason goes for us, they'll know what the feeling is like getting to this tournament, the excitement around it, and knowing the magnitude of what you're playing in. So it's definitely huge. And we just hope that the younger guys take this experience in and, you know, pass that to when they're getting older and they're the seniors on the team. Hey, Amir, um, what kind of a player is uh, Miles Johnson? And is there a, a player you've gone up against in the ACC that you can compare him to? Um, Miles is really, you know, really lengthy, physical, you know, good hands, uh, can block shots, and uh, just a pretty good all-around player. Uh, I'm not really sure that I can compare him to anyone in the ACC. You know, speaking on his physicality and his skill set, probably um, – the big from Florida State, 
the footer that they have, if I had to compare anyone just similarly wise and like height and length and just, you know, hands and being able to protect the rim. But uh, he's pretty physical from watching film and, you know, he has a pretty good skill set and touch around the rim. Beer, you guys had some success the last time you were in the tournament, uh, winning a couple games and then making the Sweet 16. Just what is the key to having success in the NCAA tournament, playing well from your perspective and, and what will you share with some of the younger guys? The, the key, first off, is, you know, just having fun and not letting the moment kind of get ahead of you and letting it uh, defeat you, kind of just getting too excited that you can't play your own game. But to follow that, just playing your game, you know, no matter who you're playing, you know, you're going to make adjustments because that's what basketball is. It's about making adjustments and going on runs. But the simple things is just having fun and playing your game and, you know, not letting the hype get you too much to the point that you can't focus and you can't perform at your best. Knowing that you were going to be – confined to your room pretty much all week. What did you pack special to occupy yourself or keep yourself busy? Uh, honestly, besides just my clothes and stuff, um, I had to bring my little goodie bag. I'm a snacker, I got to admit. But um, I also brought my Apple TV that I use. So, you know, kind of gives me the access to all different types of apps that I have. So uh, I could kind of have what I would have at home, you know, kind of make it feel a little bit more like a home. Uh, environment for me, kind of having my own freedom with that and not just having um, hotel provided channels because I don't play games. So just having my Apple TV is really the only thing I brought outside of just necessary uh, clothing. Hey, Amir, Preston with CBS 19 in Charlottesville. Just wanted to ask two questions. First of all, do you have any family or friends coming out there to watch it? And the other one is, I don't know if you've noticed or talked to these guys, but you know, you got a couple Blue Ridge guys in this tournament with uh, Sadar and Darius and uh, mm -hmm. also Sasha over at App State. I don't know if you talked to those guys, but what's that like? Just kind of the status of the program. Um, first off, my mom and dad is coming and then uh, my high school coaches will definitely be in attendance. Coach Cade and Coach Conway and a couple of others are definitely showing up. And um, yes, I have spoken to Darius and um, Sadal. We're actually in the group message just talking about our experience. I haven't spoken to Sasha. I don't really know him too particularly well, but uh, I would definitely be reaching out to him, you know, just checking in. You know, just keeping that Blue Ridge connection uh, strong. And we're definitely representing well here with our uh, respective team. So we've definitely been in contact. And uh, we've just been talking about the experience. And it's been pretty exciting for all of us. What's that like just kind of showing, you know, they won another state championship this year. I'm sure you know that. But, you know, what's that like just kind of saying, you know, the status that that program's risen to? I'm honestly proud. I'm proud to be a Baron. Uh, proud to represent Blue Ridge in this tournament. And I'm pretty sure Darius and Sasha and, Dar will all agree with that, but you know, seeing them guys get another championship, I think this is the fifth out of seven years. So it's definitely good to uh, see them guys continue the tradition of winning that, you know, that started with my first year as a sophomore with Mamadi and Malik and them. So it's definitely exciting to see that tradition continue. Rick Henry, WIS TV in Columbia. How interested are you going to be to get on the court Friday, especially with that late game and having to wait uh, an entire week just to see some action? Uh, definitely excited. You know, it's going to be nerve wracking for sure. It's my second time being in the tournament and I kind of got a feel for it. So I'll have a little edge and uh, over everyone else, me and Clyde. But um, we've been fortunate enough, you know, to actually play at that late of a game. Uh, we played nine o'clock, I think, against Louisville one time. So we kind of know what the, the feeling is like having to wait all day to kind of sit around and be ready to play. And it's definitely tough to keep your, keep your energy at the same peak that it will be. But you just got to find ways. And, you know, as long as you're excited to play, that's just going to take care of it itself. And being in the big dance, you know, that's just going to be enough right there just to be out there excited and jumping around ready to play that late of a game. Hey, so Mayor, this leader, is Will. How are you going to make sure that um, the young guys on the team who haven't been through this before, that they can keep their emotions in check, especially in the early minutes of that game? Um, I think Coach spoke on it earlier, if I'm uh, correct, that just – just being in the game itself is going to have everyone pumped up, ready to play. And like you said, uh, some people are definitely going to be exhausted, probably myself included, just being excited to get out there and play and knowing the magnitude of the situation that we're in. But uh, it's just important to keep those guys at bay. You know, after a couple of minutes, you know, it's going to settle down, just nature of the game. Those first two minutes go by, you're going to be huffing and puffing. But once you get to that timeout, you'll catch your second win. You'll be able to, you know, relax and kind of get your feet wet and get involved into the game. Hey, Bear, kind of playing off the energy thing there. I know you mentioned the other day you thought you guys might be the underdogs. And, of course, just come out, guys like Seth Greenberg and a couple other guys have been saying 
you guys, the, that Rutgers is going to go to the Sweet 16 and all that stuff. How does that motivate you guys, and does that help give you a little extra energy? Oh, 100%. You know, um, sometimes being an underdog is good because the pressure is not really on you. The pressure is on the team that's, you know, the overdog, as some would say. So um, we're definitely excited. You know, it's nothing to us. We don't take, you know, we don't take it personally that, you know, people are saying that because that's just something people have always said. So it's another day just in uh, being a Clemson Tiger, honestly speaking. And uh, we're perfectly fine with that. You know, count us out if you want. You know, we're just going to play our game. And, you know, to each his own. Everyone can say what they want. But, you know, we know we represent and we know what we can bring to the table. And that's all we're focusing on. Amir's Trevor Here. again. Um, Rutgers forces 13 turnovers a game. Y'all had 15 against Miami last week. Um, is, is, has that been a real point of emphasis this week for you uh, taking care of the ball? 100%. You know, when you turn the ball over, that's less possession that you have compared to other teams. So, you know, if you have 50 some possessions in the game, you turn over 10, you know, that's not good. You know, that's 10 other shots that the other team is getting. Um, and uh, that's, not, that's not what we want. You know, we're a little careless with the ball against Miami and we definitely want to improve on that going into this game and get Rutgers and just being strong with the ball. You know, they like the pressure and get up in you. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can do our job and take care of the ball and value possessions a little bit more than we did against Miami. Amir, having studied a lot more of Rutgers in the last few days, what impresses you the most about them? They're very similar to us, you know, in a lot of areas. They're very quick. We like to use the term of superpower. We feel as though theirs is their, their length and their size. And um, they definitely got some good guys, you know, especially their guard players really exceptionally well. You know, they got some size in the post as well. And I just think that their team is uh, pretty fast. You know, they can rebound, they can push it and transition. Um, they're pretty good in the mid range and kind of getting other shots. And that's just something we've been trying to emphasize and focus on a little bit. Amir, um, how much pride do you take in the uh, winning the Skip Prosser Award? Um, for academics and, and also your teammates having uh, six Tigers on the all academic team more than any other ACC team? Um, first off, it's, you know, it's an honor to be, you know, the, the recipient of that award, you know, being the second Tiger to do so. And um, I'm just, you know, grateful to have that, you know, under my belt. And that's probably the most important thing I've ever received. Because I know me personally, you know, growing up, I was not the brightest kid and I didn't take academics seriously until I was probably a sophomore in high school. And uh, even my freshman year, I struggled in my first semester with uh, grades and throughout the year I did. And just to have that, you know, come back academically with the support of the coaching staff and Leslie Moreland, uh, Moreland Bishop, you know, she's done a, a great job of, you know, pushing me academically and my mom as well. So it was definitely huge for her, you know, to be able to, there, to be on the FaceTime with me and experience that and just have it in. Second, you know, just having the whole team or well, six guys join it uh, academically it's huge because, you know, there's a stigma with basketball players that they don't really care about grades and stuff like that. And I think Coach Brownell emphasizes academics a lot. And he really puts the student to student athlete with our program. And uh, I think our players, you know, take pride in being named to the all academic ACC team. And uh, we're definitely going to try to keep that rolling and keep improving our GPA as a team. Probably have time for one or two more if anyone has one. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Amir. Good luck.